What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Canadian Football Fantasy Fix. I'm Ryan Coop here with your Week 5 CFL Fantasy Recap. Uh, Labor Day weekend has come and gone. Always one of the top best weeks in the CFL. We get those great rivalry matchups, and boy, did they deliver some great games this weekend. We had an absolute barn burner from the, between the Montreal Alouettes and the Ottawa Red Blacks. Who saw that one coming? And three great uh, rivalry games that we'll get to see go head-to-head -head once again this week. Uh, so lots of fun football to watch and lots of great fantasy football action this weekend. We finally got some offense and some guys delivering really high point percent, really high point totals that put you up fantastic weeks and helped you get on track to having a big week. Uh, let's start off, let's take a look at how the quarterbacks did in week number five. Uh, two quarterbacks managed to put up over 30 points on the week. Trevor Harris, 33.3, nearly 400 yards passing, four touchdown passes. A very fine day from him. Vernon Adams Jr. gets back on track with a nice day of his own with four touchdown passes, putting up 31 points. Number three quarterback, Dominic Davis, 25.4 fantasy points, uh, comes in off the bench in the second quarter against Montreal for the Red Blacks and uh, gave that offense some life finally and looks to be getting the start again this week. So uh, could Davis uh, continue that magic for a second straight week and get things going for Ottawa's offense? Uh, Dane Evans, a solid 18.9 points. Jake Mayer, the value pick, 17.1. Zach Caleros. 14.9, uh, not his best day, not his worst. Uh, Sean McGuire of the Bombers picking up two uh, one-yard scores, uh, you know, rushing it from the goal line, puts up 12.3 points. Uh, and then a couple of guys that uh, had been underwhelming days, uh, Nick Arbuckle, just 8.8. .8. Uh, he gets replaced by McCloud Bethel-Thompson later in the game, who puts up 8.4. Uh, Cody Fajardo, the highest-priced quarterback in the game, arguably the best quarterback so far this season. A very, very disappointing 4.5 fantasy points. He threw three interceptions, uh, and he had himself a rough day against that uh, Bombers defense, who had a fantastic day of their own. And then Matt Nichols putting up uh, the dismal negative 1.1 points uh, before getting replaced by Dominic Davis. Taking a look at the running backs, it was, uh, once again, no surprise, James Wilder Jr. leading the way, an 18.1 fantasy point day for Wilder. Uh, Andrew Harris uh, putting up a solid 14.2, but did not get you the value you needed at his uh, high price salary. Kadeem Carey, a decent 12.7 points. William Stanback had a big day on the ground, but still... Uh, is not getting involved in the passing game and is not getting those touchdowns, so he puts up 11.2. Uh, the Argos running backs combined for uh, over 19 fantasy points, but it's split down the middle. If you took the chance on DJ Foster being involved uh, once again in the, the run game and the pass game and in a dual back system, it paid off for you with 10.2. And uh, if you thought John White was going to uh, get the bulk of the carries and uh, have a big day, you were a little disappointed with 8.9. Uh, Sean Thomas Erlington, just 6.7 points. Not a whole lot going for the Ticats in the run game again. Uh, William Powell, likewise, had a great rushing average, 5.5 yards of carry, uh, but the Riders do not give him the ball enough, and he puts up just 6.1 points. A um, couple return guys there in the middle. Jamal Morrow for the Riders, uh, for his first game in the return game, I thought he looked very good against the Bombers on route, putting up 5 points. If you went with Justin Davis as the uh, as a value pick, you know, he was starting running back. He was $3,500. I had him in my lineup as well. Uh, just 3.8 points from Justin Davis did not quite get you the value you needed there. And uh, a couple other uh, backups, you know, Ante milanovic uh sometimes gets a little more involved in Calgary's offense, did not this time. And uh, Don Jackson making his first appearance of the 2021 season, uh, only getting uh, a couple carries and a few yards along the way. 
taking a look at the wide receivers, it was a couple of big names for Montreal uh, having themselves fantastic performances. Jake Wynicke puts up 31. He had over 100 yards and two touchdowns. So did Eugene Lewis, who finally had his big breakout game of the year. Uh, I talked about it on last week's preview. Uh, that, you know, he's most targeted receiver in Montreal's offense. It's only a matter of time before they connect. And boy, did they connect 29 fantasy points. The bulk of that came just in the first half alone. Uh, big surprise at uh, number three is Daniel Peterman out of Ottawa. 26.7 points. He had himself some himself two touchdowns on the day as well. Uh, perhaps, you know, a breakout game that leads to more for Daniel Peterman as that offense gets on track. Another solid week for Markeith Ambles and Kamara Jordan. Uh, value pick Tim White, $2,500. Really got you the good value this week if, uh, with 21.9 points. Uh, and then around the four to $5,000 category, uh, big days for Mike Jones and Devontae Dedman. Uh, Dedman in particular getting involved finally in that offense a little more. He had, you know, he had a catch or two. He had a rushing play. And he had uh, over 250 return yards, which is insane. So... Uh, those value picks or those picks definitely paid off for you at a bit of a lower price point. Kyron Moore, 15 targets, I believe 10 catches for the Riders, uh, 18.5 points. Eric Rogers had himself two touchdowns, puts up 16. Uh, Jalen Tolver getting his first start in the Elks offense, puts up 15.8. RJ Harris puts up 15.8 as well for Ottawa. Uh, Josh Huff, another solid week with 15.5. Uh, Darrell Walker, 15.4. Uh, close to getting the value you needed out of Darrell Walker, but not quite there. Uh, Curly Gettins Jr. getting more involved in that Toronto offense uh, with the absence of Ricky Collins Jr. Puts up 14.8. And uh, Ernest Edwards making his debut also puts up 14.6 points. Uh, Greg Ellingson, 13.5. Believe it or not, that was the uh, the lowest point total by a, an Elks receiver. So if you took any of the Elks at wide receiver that were uh, that were starting this week, you had a very, uh, very solid production towards your fantasy totals. Uh, Nick Dembski leads the way for Bomber receivers with 13.1 points. Uh, Jalen Acklin, uh, a solid 12.6. Tavares Daniels, decent production, 11.7. Uh, Daniel Braverman, a great day at a $2,500 salary with 11.4. Same thing with David Unger, who gets his first touchdown of the year and puts up 11. Uh, Brandon Banks, once again, you know, gets slightly more on track this week with 10.7, but a uh, very disappointing day if you're spending twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 on Brandon Banks. And uh, I know he did suffer a big hit and looked like he was a bit shaken up from it, so... Uh, hopefully Banks is all uh, healed and ready to go for the rematch this week. Nate Bahar puts up a second straight solid week for the Red Blacks. Jordan Williams-Lambert, decent production, 10.2. Uh, Darvin Adams, Drew Wolitarski, uh hovering around the 10-point mark. Uh, I thought Wolitarski had himself a great game. He was very involved in that offense. Uh, and puts you up a decent 9.8 points, which would uh, would cover the value you need. At his price point, uh, Ryan Davis uh, still covers the value you need at 7.6, but not as outstanding of a day as the week before. Uh, probably one of the bigger disappointments of the week, Kenny Lawler. I was expecting a big 15, 20 point day from him. He gets just 6.8 points. Uh, not a whole lot going offensively for uh, Winnipeg or Saskatchewan in that game. Uh, B.J. Cunningham, 6.7. Uh, rookie Ricardo Lewis making his first start p puts up 5.3. Mario Alfred, the return guy for the Alouettes, 4.7. And uh, Rasheed Bailey for the Bombers uh, also putting up 4.7. A, a bit of a step back for him this week, uh, much like Kenny Lawler after a couple fantastic performances in a row. Uh, Herji Mayala still not getting anything going for the Stamps. Uh, 4.5 points for him. Richie Sandani puts up four. And then a couple value plays that maybe you tried to bite on uh, after big performances the week before uh, that di didn't quite pay off for you. Steven Dunbar Jr., 3.3. Uh, Mitchell picked in uh, Keon Sheffer Baker uh, and Braden Lenius, uh, all hovering just around that three point mark. A couple backup Ottawa receivers uh, Wesley Lewis, Michael Klukas, putting up around two and a half. 
Uh, Dijon Brissett uh, not getting too involved this time around for Toronto, uh, 2.2. Malik Henry, uh, not a whole lot for him in the return game. I know Josh Huff ended up taking a bunch of the returns as well. Uh, so just two points for him. Uh, Damian Jean-Pierre getting his first start in the Argos line up with 1.8. And uh, Charles Nelson not getting anything going in the return game for the Bombers. Just 1.8 points for him there as well. And on defense, uh, it was the Ticats leading the way with a big 14-point performance. Uh, I know they had the, uh, the pick six that certainly contributed to that. And they were uh, shutting things down for the Argos offense all day long. Uh, the Bombers put up a solid 13 points against Saskatchewan. Uh, they got a couple sacks in there. They also got a couple interceptions uh, that helped you get that point total up on the board. Montreal putting up 13 points, uh, despite giving up a lot of points to Ottawa. They they still, you know, Ottawa threw three interceptions, uh, and I think Montreal got home with a couple of sacks as well. If you didn't take one of these defenses, you were wildly disappointed in the defense you did take, uh, the Riders putting up just three points. A lot of talent on that D-line and across the defense for Saskatchewan. But the Bombers have a great offensive line. Uh, Toronto puts up just two points. Edmonton puts up two points. And uh, very disappointing days. Zero from the Red Blacks. And if you took a chance on Calgary's defense, uh, you got negative one point out of it. So... Not ideal in the slightest if you didn't take Hamilton, Winnipeg, or Montreal. So these were the overall performances for week number five. What did my lineup look like? I failed in this lineup here. Uh, Jake Mayer in at quarterback. I went for the cheaper option there. Uh, he puts up 17.1 points. Comes close to getting the 2.5 points per $1,000 that I strive to get from each uh, $1,000 I spend. Uh, same thing with James Wilder Jr., 18.1 points, a solid day for him. Uh, he picks up a touchdown, uh, comes close to covering that value. A disappointing day for Justin Davis, nothing going in the run game. It was all pass for the Red Blacks. Uh, Devontae Dedman, again, 258 return yards, uh, also a reception, two receptions and a carry, puts up a nice 19.1. Josh Huff getting the solid production uh, for another week in a row. Uh, I bid on Kenny Lawler. I thought he was going to have another big day, but 6.8 points was uh, was a, the probably the biggest disappointment in my lineup. And the Montreal defense for 13 points, giving me a total of 93.5 on the week. So close to that 100-point mark that we were striving to hit. Uh, and maybe we can get there again next week. So that, that does it for week five. We say goodbye to week five of CFL Fantasy, uh, and we begin to look towards week number six. Uh, stay tuned later today. I'll have your quarterback preview, your running back preview for week six today. Uh, tomorrow, stay tuned for wide receivers and defense. And then uh, first game of the week comes on Friday night. So on Friday, I will have your uh, first depth chart update for the week. I will go through the available depth charts, and we actually should have all of them at that point because it's a triple header on Saturday. So we'll go through all the depth charts, injury reports, and go through anything of note that will help you when setting your lineups. Do all the YouTube things, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you liked, what you didn't, and uh, if you have any fantasy questions, put them in the comments section, tweet them at me, at CooperTrooper42. I'm happy to answer them to the best of my ability. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the week six preview here on the Canadian Football Fantasy Fix. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.